Hey, greetings everyone once again. Uh, first of all, I just want to talk to the junior high boys a little bit. I know they'd appreciate this. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I had to go up into my attic. My wife noticed that the uh, attic fan uh, that runs when the attic gets a certain temperature, that it has been running. So I thought, well, better check it out. She wanted me to check it out. So before the house burnt down, she said. So I went up and uh, there was electric there, but the motor wasn't working. So I took uh, the fan off and there looking back at me was uh, several bats uh, right up there in the uh, attic area. Of course, they was right on the other side of the screen. The screen has a few holes in up there. So that was quite the adventure. So um, last night I hung, when they left, I went up, see if they are still there. And then, so they is out getting their supper. And so I hung up some smelly stuff that <clears throat> the uh, Google said they do not like to smell. So we will see if that works. As soon as I'm done this video, I'm going to go up and check and see if they're there again this morning. If not, <laughs> I'm going to go find something else. Um, but anyway, well, we're back with a jo Joshua today. And then uh, if you look at verse number two of chapter one, it reads, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I give unto them, even to the children of Israel. And in this verse, we see the commission that uh, the Lord has now given to Joshua to go. But the first thing he says is, he says, therefore arise. Saying, Joshua, it's time to get up and get going. Now, this was right after Moses had passed away. So I'm sure there was a time of grieving in his life. Uh, time, you know, Moses, he spent a lot of time with. They were friends. Uh, he was the servant of Moses, and I'm sure that uh, it was kind of a downtime in his life at this time. And he had already been, uh, Moses already laid his hands on Joshua uh, before this, <clears throat> so Joshua knew he was going to be the, be the leader. And so now Joshua was feeling the pressure of, well, he's no longer the servant of Moses. Now he is the leader of the children of Israel, and I'm sure that was all on him, and the Lord saying, okay, Joshua, it's time to get up and get going to do what I have for you. And you know, sometimes we're just like that as well, aren't we? Things don't go good. We get down, and we just kind of get out of the routine of serving the Lord. Uh, we go into a place, maybe not depression, but we just get down, don't feel like doing anything. We you know what? Sometimes we just need to get up and get going because God's got something for us to do. And then uh, he says there uh, in that verse the two things, the two commissions that God wanted Joshua to do. The one was this, to go over the Jordan, to cross over the Jordan that had, uh, the Bible says, was over flooding its banks for one thing. And then number two, go in and possess the land of Canaan. <laughs> you know, just this that little uh, task. Joshua was already there. He already knew what it looked like. He already knew the battles that was going to be before him. And so now that's what he had to arise to go to. But what does Joshua have? Uh, jo God has given Joshua what he needs to take care of what lies before him. And he does the same for you and I. The first of all is this. He has the promise of God. In that verse, he said this, uh, unto the lamb which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And verse 3 says, Every place that the sole of your foot has, shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Well, God has just promised him that everything was over in Canaan, all, everything he saw, all those, the, the uh, cities, uh, the land that's flowing with milk and honey, all these things, God says, that is yours. Okay? That's a promise that I'm giving to you that that belongs to you. So he had a promise. And remember, we have a God that cannot lie. Well, second of all, not only give him a promise, but he had the protection of God. In verse number five, the Bible says, There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. <laughs> wow. He got protection. And so he knew when he was going into battle, God was going to protect him in what he had for him to do. And not only had protection, was thirdly, he had this. He had the presence of God. Verse 5 as well says this. As I was with Moses, so I will be, be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He had the promise of God. He had the protection of God. He had the presence of God. Presence of God. And you know what? Nothing 
could stand in their way of what God wanted them to do unless they shot themselves in their foot. You know what I mean? Unless they did not do what God wanted them to do. If they did not listen to the Lord. And what happened? Their second battle. The battle of Ai. What happened? They didn't obey the voice of the Lord. Achan. Remember Achan? And they lost that battle. Listen. Uh, and there, there was uh, people, I forget now how many, had lost their lives uh, there uh, in that battle. But it was all because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. Well, you know, we have those same three areas. We, all, we also have the promises of God. Listen, this book, we, there's some promises in there just for the children of Israel. But there's promises in here that's for you and I. There's promises that uh, we are sealed into the day of redemption. So we don't have to worry about... Uh, losing our salvation. Uh, we just have, we have the promises that if we ask, we shall receive. Uh, there's just so many promises uh, in uh, the Word of God that we have that the only thing we do is, is trust in them, believe in it, and then and listen to what the Lord has to say, the conditions. A lot of times the Bible say, if, then. Okay, we have these promises if we do our part, and God will take care of his part. But not only that, we have the protection of God. Listen, nothing can happen to us unless the Lord allows it to happen. Okay, anything happens in our lives, the Lord has allowed that to happen. And also, you know, the Bible says that we're not going to be tempted more than what we can handle. Okay, God's going to protect us in that. Uh, the Bible gives us the whole armor of God that we can withstand uh, against the wiles of the devil. So he gives us the tools we need, everything we need uh, for our protection as we go to our day-to-day -day daily life. And then we have the presence of God. When the day we get saved, uh, the Holy Spirit is birth. We are born again. We have a, a, the born of the Spirit from above. And uh, he dwells now, the Holy Spirit now dwells within us. And so we have that promise as well. So we also have uh, the promises of God. We have the uh, protection of God. We have the presence of God. And you know what? The only thing that can ruin it for us is ourselves. When I do not obey the word of the Lord and what he wants me to do, that's the only thing uh, that's going to get me uh, down. Listen, uh, God never promised this life on earth to be easy. It's not going to be ever since the sin of Adam and Eve at the beginning. And it's not going to be perfect until we get to heaven. And we have battles. But God gives us promises in these battles. God gives us promise in our day-to-day, -day, daily life, no matter what it is that happened. Well, you have a great day, my friend. God bless you. I'm going to go up and check and see if my bats return. And then I got grass to mow today. So whatever it is you're doing, be safe. And I love you. praying for you. God bless you.